Hey there, Luis Moreno with Simply Health Insurance Agency. All right, got an email from one of my agents. And I know exactly, or at least I think I know exactly what's going on with this email. I'm going to share the email and my response to it and what you agents should be doing so that if you come across it, you'll know exactly what to do and probably who's doing it. All right. So uh, before I share the email, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hopefully those guys that are doing this see this. I know they had some little chat room that some agents sent me. And my videos, I think these guys hate me. And uh, they posted some of my videos out there. But I guess uh, not all news is uh, bad news. My, my channel keeps growing. And I definitely would like for you to uh, help me out and grow the channel. Thank you. All right. So let's look at the email. This is what I got from one of my agents. So here is what the email states. Uh, so, hey, Luis, I have a quick question. I've run into this situation several times during this OEP and want to see what you think is best practice for this situation. What I have run into is a lot of leads will have fill out a lead form and I will call them and get a complete application with full employment history, current income and doctors. But when I search Hell Sherpa, I find that this lead has already been rolled by another agent, but it appears to be one of these scammy agents who only gets minimal information and enrolls them because their income is always set to self-employed or other income is always set to 15 grand. What a shocker. And I know from speaking with a client that they have a job and make more than 15,000. In this case, should I cancel the current policy that the other agent enrolled them in and submit a brand new one? Or should I simply update the application? Thank you. All right, so yes. This is typically from a group of agents, typically the no-call agents who have a form on Facebook. And, and these idiots, these guys are still using the $500 free Visa gift card. They're still using the $1,400 gift back. And, you know, it's, I mean, we all know they don't give any money back. What insurance company is going to give you a $500 free Visa gift card? Nothing but a bunch of lies. And, you know, in addition to that, the 1400 I mean, is completely misleading. I mean, the, this this leader of this, this group, piece of crap as well as his followers. But it is what it is. It happens all the time. Uh, you know, in every industry, you've always got those group of people that you have to, uh, uh, that you're going to have to that do this. And uh, it is what it is, guys. But here's what I think you should do. Number one, I think when you come across it, you need to educate the client. You need to let them know, hey, those guys that are doing that, first of all, typically when you fill out that form and these, these, uh, these desperate people that want this free money, they normally do not put the entire household on there. Okay. They may be looking for insurance for just themselves, but they're not going to put the spouse. They're not going to put the kids that have Medicaid because they don't think that they need to. They're just looking for the insurance. Well, we know as good agents that we need the entire tax household. What about income? Well, guess what? There's a box that they check off that says, hey, we're going to get you a $0 health plan, but you're agreeing to minimum income numbers. Really? So they household of one for 15000 Yeah, that's minimum income or very, very a little bit above it. But um, you know, it gets them a $0 health plan. But what if they're married? Well, that minimum income... A fifteen thousand for two people is not enough. Or what if you know that fifteen thousand for one person? But what about the spouse? What if the spouse makes fifty thousand? Well, now they're at sixty-five as opposed to fifty. And the income numbers are never accurate when you're dealing in that kind of scenario. Also, what about doing a good job for these clients? What about asking them about their doctors and medications and actually going in a health sherpa, putting that data in, and finding them a plan that has their doctors and meds. Those guys aren't doing that, okay? And they're, you know, my guess is they're not doing that because I would assume the insurers are not taking the time to fill all that info out. They don't, they, they don't know that these plants have networks and they have formulas. Most of them are HMOs and they're tight networks. They don't know that. Most of these people are uninsured and desperate. So what would I suggest that you guys do when you run in? run into a scenario like this, number one, educate your client about what's going on. 
Educate your client about that agent and what they're doing. Educate them about the potential tax liabilities that they're going to have. Then do your job, collect the data. And here's what I would do. I would not do a new application. What I would do is I would report a life change and update it with the correct information. Then you will become the agent of record. And then you will choose a new plan. Most of these plans will still allow agent of record changes. Um, there are a few that even if you make that change, they will not pay out like Blue Cross Blue Shield. They, they, the original writing agent sticks to it unless you put them in a different plan. But always do what's best for your client, guys. You know, that's how you're going to make long-term money in this industry. That's how clients are going to stick. Talk to these agents, and I talk to them all the time. A lot of their business is not sticking the books. They write a lot. They steal a lot. But then it's it, it, it evaporates, mainly because you're nothing. If you're one of those agents, you're nothing to those people. Well, you bet you got to become something to those people. You got to become their agent. You got to become the person that they went to seek advice so they that they see value in you for you, for them to stick with you. Okay. When you're one of these no call agents and they just fill out a form, you're you're just a order taker. You're just sitting in the back seat doing it. And it's okay to do stuff like that, but they don't know who you are. All right. So with that being said, here's what I would do, guys. Report the life change, you know, fix the account for the client, um, take care of them. And, and then the, the next thing I would do is put these people on a hit list, put them onto like a, a watch list, put them on a Google Sheets and watch them because these other agents are freaking rats. They will go in there at uh, uh, the day before the, the cut, they, the day before the month ends, and they will go in there and they'll switch your client. Okay. So you, I would do the very same thing. I'd get on there and I'd watch and make sure that they don't do that. Okay, number one, if they do do that, my guess is they're not collecting consent forms. I tell you what, I've got three of them here. One, two, three. I mean, I did 10, 15 apps today, most of them in person to collect that signatures. I doubt it whether these guys are doing this. So possibly we could hang them, uh, you know, and I hope we can. May, you know, if it does happen, talk to your insured, find out if they signed some kind of consent form and if they didn't, file a complaint with the marketplace because we agents are supposed to be getting consent forms for every enrollment and re-enrollment or if we're doing any kind of changes to an application. So do your job, guys. Do your thing. Take care of these agents and hopefully you'll be able to build a good, solid book of business. All right. Thank you. Guys, don't forget, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Um, comment on my video. I'd like for some of you guys to comment. Uh, See if you all are, uh, you know, it, it'd be comical. I'd, I'd really like to see some of the comments from some of these agents that are doing this crap. Um, but the rest of you guys normally do good stuff. So uh, share my channel. I appreciate it. And guys, have a good open enrollment.